Hey guys, Frank here, your virtual general aviation aviator. And today I am back in the the SR-22, the, um, excuse the dog, he's got some sort of respiratory infection. But anyway, I'm back in the, the SR-22, um, tail number 724 Mike Whiskey. And uh, like I dropped something, I dropped my sectional chart. I, um, I did order a sectional chart um, and um, study, been studying it a little bit. Anyway, I digress. Um, so my plan is to take a, a, a flight from Myrtle Beach, which is where I'm at now. I'm um, actually am using Vertical Sims um, payware version of Myrtle Beach and I think I am going to fly to RDU, my home airport. Okay, so let's get started. Um, and I kind of jumped in without doing anything. So uh, as you guys know, I'm not known for short videos. So, um, so I hope you guys will enjoy the flight, enjoy watching me uh, get this bird ready to get airborne and all of that good stuff so we'll get in and the first thing we'll do <coughs> excuse me let's check our brakes and fuel valve uh, fuel valve is open and our brakes are are set and we are good our chucks are removed let's go ahead and um, and open up this guy Chucks are removed, tied down in fuselage, P-top cover, and all that stuff are not on the aircraft. Um, <clears throat> not going to worry about maintenance right now. And let's go ahead and add my weight. And I'm at a whopping 165. So it is getting dark. Um, and it's getting dark quickly. Um, I actually do want to start my real weather application. So let's get that started. And let's see. And let's uh, let's get a passenger. Uh, let's say I got. Um, passenger a female 135 and um, and let's say we got some bags uh, let's say we went to the beach okay so right now with the fuel that I have I'm outside of my envelope my center of gravity envelope so I either got to take out some fuel or take out some bags or go and jog around the block and lose some weight uh, best thing to do is just take some fuel out so I call the truck and let's go with um, let's see if we go with 39 gallons in each tank pull out a, then I'm still right in my envelope a little bit nose heavy um, looks like but um, but I could make that work um, out of an abundance of caution um, since I don't really need this much fuel then I think what um, let's see I think I had them take out a little bit more and we'll just use 35 gallons in each tank and we'll stop there okay and See if we can. Okay, and that looks a little better. Okay, and um, livery generator. I don't need to worry about that. We've been through that guy. All right. So, um, and let's say I guess we'll fly VFR. So. I'm going to avoid going to sim brief and actually looking for a, f a route 
to get us there, but I do need to look at Sky Vector um, to hopefully find a way forward. So I'm actually um, waiting on Sky Vector to load up. And once it does, then I will pull Sky Vector over. So let's put in our route. And you see, I got some weather to contend with. So, so flying VFR may not be an option. Um, KRDU. And get rid of these waypoints here. You guys get to see the sausage being made. Okay, so as you can see, RDU is virtually due north of um, of Murder Beach. Virtually. Uh, so I know I'm going to be flying northerly. All right, so let's see what else spaces we got in route it's the first thing we're going to check so i got a a mower a game cop mower and if i check my my chart then i can see that at this time of night it's inactive um but we'll check it anyway let's see let's get this chart out uh, actually, um, I don't know if Sky Vector has something that can be clicked on to check it. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, so let's check. Let's just see if we can't look that up real quick. And. These things are okay. So six thirty to twenty two thirty, six thirty a.m. to twenty two thirty, uh, Monday through Friday. The day is um, Thursday, and it's so it doesn't it doesn't go inactive until 8 30 p.m. so we probably would do better to to plot a course around it all right so here's a, a dme and we'll go ahead and and fly towards that dme that will vector us around that more that um this Gamecock A military operations area is what Moore stands for. And then we got Fort Bragg and we got some restricted space here that we definitely want to stay out of. And if we were to, to let's see now how we want to negotiate the, 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 the Fairville class Charlie um so as long as we're over here's the shelf here so as long as we're over 4200 feet then we can fly over the the charlie so we do know that we want to be over uh 4200 feet and we can overfly that guy um i don't like getting this close to the restricted area um, but I guess I would be okay. All right. So coming on up into RDU, I don't see anything else to be that's concerning. No, uh, L spaces. Um, and look like we can plan to, to either do a straight in on, uh, this would be five right or two three left or maybe even uh, three two so we'll just see when we get there all right so we got a plan and 
and we got a bunch of weather out to the west so we got to make sure that that uh, that we can get over that weather now this is cloud cover this blue stuff here and so I am going to have to file an IFR flight uh, otherwise I would need to fly um, to Wilmington and then fly to RDU to try to avoid the clouds and it's you know the clouds will probably overtake the the, the route that I got so yeah um, so let's um, let's put in a route then um, let's um, let's make the route that we um, have let's file the route that we just did as as IFR so we'll go direct to to the um, what's the name of this this um, DME uh, not DME but NDB um, is it Jiggle Jiggle we we'll go direct to Jiggle and then direct to our, to our to our destination. That's the route that we're going to choose. And let's see. Or yeah. Or the actually, if we're going to do a IFR, then we probably need to to fly some victors. Let's see. If we chose one of those, then that would take us over the the um, over the moor and my. So I, if I if I flew over the moor, then I I need to go. Uh, let's see how high do I need to go. So let's go back to the map and see how high I need to go to not have that as an issue. Okay, so let me look up Gamecock again. More on my sectional chart is in magenta. Um, restricted airspace is in blue. Um, so Gamecock so if I'm above 7,000 feet, um, AGL, no, I'm sorry, 7,000 7, feet MSL, then, um, then I'm good. So, so I need to file for at least, um, let's see, this RDU is westerly, so I need to file for at least 8,000 feet. All right. So I don't know what the tops of the clouds are, but um, if I can get over top of the clouds, that would be wonderful. So let's uh, let's plan for 11,000. All right. So yeah, let's just do 11,000. Okay. So enough of this. Um, we've we. Um, If we flew this guy, that's a lot more direct, and we got to get out of here because that weather's moving in quickly. All right. So, in fact, let's start our real weather engine. Um, and I meant to have already started this guy. But like I said, I started recording this without doing anything. Look like I got my real weather engine already started. So I just need to download dynamic weather. And after I get it downloaded, I just need to transfer it to the sim. All right. So let's get started here. All right. So um, 
I say it female and look who I get. <laughs> That's okay though. Alright. <laughs> this is a pro flight then. Uh, Alright. Uh, so let me uh, concentrate on on getting started here. Alright, so let's get our mixture set. Turn our lights on. We know our brakes are set. Uh, turn our battery on and then we'll start with go ahead and turn our strobes on so give people a heads up and clear up right make sure ain't nobody out there and clear up left and I don't know if anybody can hear me when I yell clear prop but I have made it a habit of doing so all right so let's do a high fuel boost. Make sure we got positive fuel flow. 9.7, looking good. Low fuel boost. And put the key in there. Prop clear. Max are hot. Just a quick look. It always take this guy a minute to catch, but she will. There you go. Okay, roughly a thousand on the tack there. And alternators can come on. And avionics. Okay. And let's go ahead and turn our pedal heat on. Uh, probably won't need it, but since there's so much moisture in the air, then just on the, the air on the side of caution, go ahead and turn it on. and load our sky vector flight plan in and go ahead and transfer the um, the weather from the app to the sim and flight plan and we're going to do hick vic um Victor 36, uh, Victor 136, I'm sorry. And in real life, I would not make this flight um, in such a small plane with this weather around it. I'm looking for, oh, we're going to exit at Grub, load that, and then our final destination is going to be RDU. Okay, and, and we got a flight plan loaded. All right. So, just move past these guys. Good on gas. Engine parameters all in the green. All right. And look at our map. North is north tracks up. So the airplane is, is pointed to the south, which is why it looked that way. But if I um, do it by the compass, then that changes the perspective. So I'm going to leave it there for the time being. All right. And let's get our aiders for Myrtle Beach. Uh, may already be in the compass in the... Uh, and no, it's not. Let's see. Let's flip this and see if 
one of those is get. Oh, all right. So let's um, let's go to our flight plan and Myrtle Beach waypoint frequencies. Ados is one twenty three point nine two. So let's make this 0.92 and flip that in. Myrtle Beach INTL information, Juliet. Juliet. 2200 Zulu weather. Wind light and variable. Light and variable. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 4100 few. 6100 broken. 8100 scattered. Temperature 26. 2.23. Altimeter 3000. Arriving runway 18. Departing runway 18. Advised on initial contact, you have Juliet. Okay, got Juliet. Information Juliet. And winds light and variable. We got a few clouds at 4100. And um, a terminal is 3000. So let's get that altimeter set. It's, uh, it's close. Um, barometer, so we hit that guy and dial this down one and let's set this guy here on our backup and three zero 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 and you know it's occurring to me that the uh, the backup must be slightly off because at three zero 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 I should be showing twenty feet and I noticed that in my last flight that that it looked like it was off a little bit so I'm gonna have to report that to maintenance. Uh, look like it's off probably about 50 feet, maybe a hundred, uh, maybe 50 feet or so. But anyway, uh, you can see it's getting dark. So let's um, let's get on our taxi light and we want runway 18. Uh, nav and light. Okay, turn off our strobe. And turn on our um, on our panel lights. Go ahead and light that up a little bit. And don't need the overhead lights on just yet. Okay, because we got light in the cabin from the from the street lighting. Uh, or the parking light lamps. Um, these guys up here. <laughs> All right. So, are we ready to turn and burn? Um, let's see, what are we missing here? So, we, um, we need to go back to our waypoint and finish getting our frequencies. All right. So we're just going to talk to ground and clearance, to ground and tower. I mean, ground is 120 point, um, uh, 120.3. Let's go ahead and flip that in. And tower is 128.45. All right. Myrtle Beach Ground Zero 724 Mike Whiskey is at General Aviation. We are ready to taxi IFR with Whiskey. I'm sorry, with Juliet. Taxi 2, runway 18. Um, Sarah, 724 Mike Whiskey. 
Okay, so I don't know my taxi designations for this airport. So let's see. How are we going to get to 1-8? We are here. 1-8 will point us towards the south. So we're going to attack. We're going to taxi uh, Bravo. Taxiway Bravo, I think. Um, I think this is going to be 1-8 up here at the top. Yep. So we're going to taxi Bravo to Bravo 5. We pick up Bravo at, two, at Bravo 2. Okay, and I'm sitting here, so Bravo 2 is going to be on my left. All right. So let's release our brakes. And start our taxi. Brake check. Brakes are working. And the alternators have turned off. We, we can pick up a yellow brick road here. And, and hopefully this will take us to Bravo 2. Runway should be on our left there. Whoa. Bravo 2 should be directly in front of us. I see Bravo 2. So this sign says Bravo 2. I just need to. Okay, there it is. All right. So. Let's get over, let's get on the Bravo Yellow Brick Road. I mean the, um, the, um, this guy. And Actually, actually, I think if I turn around and just take Bravo up to, let's see, why am I feeling confused? Okay, yeah, I think I can just, I think this is Bravo. I'm so busy looking for Bravo too, to get me on the Bravo that I wound up on Bravo Yes, I'm on Bravo now. And it's always been a challenge taxiing in a simulator. So I am laser focused on this yellow brick road. <laughs> That's my pet name for for doing oh Okay, let's, let's slow down. Brakes are really sensitive. Just the, the slightest touch and, and it feels like the aircraft just yell right off the brake road here.
follow the yellow brick road. That's my nomenclature for this yellow line. So, it's funny that I've been to Fayetteville and Myrtle Beach and I got paid where air Airports, but I have not really taken the time to really explore the, the airports um, and it seems like both times I've gotten here it got it, it turned out to be night I am doing a real weather a real world weather and a real world time flight so so what's going on out the window is going on in real life which means that I probably won't have a lot of interesting stuff to see in, in our in route flight You know, I'm so trained to using the, um, on using the rudder pedals, pushing them and pulling them, that it's hard to just remember that all, that I'm, that I'm using strictly the brakes for steering. All right, so I do see the stars up there, so that's a good thing. And I know I got weather moving in. All right, so I didn't see, I didn't know a runway designation. So I'm hoping this is Bravo One. Um, hoping this is the Bravo that that's taking us to the top of the runway. And of course, I can look down at um, my chart on the Garmin G750. Yep, Bravo 5, I think that's uh, where we want to be. And if I had on my, um, my um, what do you call it, my Oculus VR set with all this taxiing, I would, <laughs> I would really be getting seasick or motion sick. All right. So we'll we'll just hold short here. Change our frequency. Murray Breach Tower, Sierra seven two four Mike Whiskey is holding short runway one eight ready to depart for Raleigh. anything coming clear for departure runway 1824 Mike Whiskey All right let's drop our flaps in turn our strokes back on Check our flaps, make sure they're indicated. Yep. And go ahead and line up here. to go. Final checks. No oxygen required for power. Start 
takeoff room. Power is set. Track the center line. Rotate. Positive rate. Guess we could have did a little bit more to set up our um, our GPS heading book to runway heading. The winds were light and verbal. A whole lot to see down there. So let's uh, let's go ahead and switch the nav. GPS is in, indicated. And autopilot. AP is alive and nav. Alright. So we are out over the water one reason why we're not seeing anything. And let's bring in those flaps and turn off our landing lights. Flap up is indicated. So let's set our altitude bug to 8,000. Um, I think our cruise was 11th. Actually, technically, Tower would, would be vectoring us, telling us what to do. Um, you know, I should do more on flight on bat sim for this kind of stuff. Um, I don't even know if Fat Sim is is um, is operating. All right, so we're over land. There's our airport, and let's get our map. Let's uh, go out on our map. So we intercept them. We should intercept our course directly. Climbing at 700. Let's go ahead and set our autopilot up to um, to climb at uh, 700. So we want vertical speed. Let's change this guy. Well, I want to do it here. Um, because right now, set at negative at, um, at 800. So, you know, all right. So now. speed there we go and we'll set it for a thousand feet a minute that should give us about a hundred and forty feet per uh, hundred and forty knots on the climb we should we got clouds at four thousand anyway few but 
I'm not encountering, encountering clouds. Or maybe I am because I can't see the ground below me out the window. I do see an airport there. Okay. So we're climbing at 10,000 feet and we wanted so what was our cruise altitude for, um, I thought we said 11, uh, I'm sorry, we said 8 to get over the, the game cop more. And we were going to do, well let's just do 8. Um, that gets us over to more and I really don't see any reason to go much higher. It doesn't have any terrain to deal with. I guess if we hit fouled for 11, not 11, I, don't, I keep saying 11, but we're going west of this, so it would have to be an even number. Um, so it would probably would have been 10, and I don't recall saying 10, so maybe we filed for eight. So yeah, eight is, is what we filed for. I said it, I meant it, and I really represent it. All right, so we're still in our climb. Flaps are up. We over. So I'm going to lean it out just a little. Maybe we can get a little bit more power by leaning just a little. So I did lean the mixture just a little. Checking the fuel. really hard to see, but I do need to change fuel tanks. All right, so I'm going to turn my overhead on so I can see my panel just a little. Okay, so I need to turn that fuel boost on, and I can turn the fuel boost off, and now I'm on my right tank in this message here. And how far are we from Hickey? Um, we're five minutes of 13.8 nautical miles. And we are 46 minutes from RDU. So we got about 500 to go to get to our cruise. Not a lot to see on the ground. And we do have a little overhead light. You know, I didn't remove my caps. That's something that I'm going to have to either um, try to remember to do. I need to tie it to something in my mind. Of course, I could have used a checklist, but with the length of the flight that I'm making, um, the check, going through the checklist will literally take me an extra um, 40, maybe up to 40 minutes. Well, maybe not that long in this particular checklist, but it would take me longer and I, I didn't want to put the time into doing the checklist. You know, I didn't capture my altitude some 500 feet above where I should be. So let's uh, come down here.
scientists tell it to capture the altitude on the way down. Okay, altitude. It should capture 8,000. And I'm at a 300 feet per minute descent. So I can actually lean, go ahead and, well, change that to 500 feet. I take the speed. I'm approaching the yellow, so dial that back up to 300. You don't want to overstress the airframe here. 500 feet to go. 170. I'll pull it back on the power a little bit. Got a 18.5 gallon per hour fuel flow. So I'm burning a lot more fuel than I really need to. I want to get that down between, I'd say, 13 and 15. All right, so we are 100 feet and we should be at cruise. So let's go ahead and lean our fuel. And we got a lean assist here we can use. Okay, so this says looking for first peak. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to come down and peak detected. Okay, so if it says peak detected, that means it actually found both first and and last peaks. So I got a good lean here. So I'm gonna uh, go with what I got there and switch back to my map. Hell Pass Hickey and next waypoint is RDU and that's um well I'm on a Victor and and with the Victor it did load a series of uh L of um waypoints so I got three minutes to my next waypoint um I want 75%, between 70 and 75% on my power setting, so I can, I can add a little bit more, I like to say, peas to the pot. Um, I think I'm happy with a 70% power setting. Uh, that kind of give me a little bit more on the economy of fuel burn. Fuel flow is 15.1 gallons per hour. Of course, I did have a lot of fuel, so I am not too concerned about running out of fuel. Still probably have um, some time on that right tank. All right, let's take a look at the aircraft at night not a lot to see and I do have the labels for traffic global turned on so that's what you are seeing are the labels um, so if if you've been looking at the the at these guys here um, like Spirit Airlines 
uh, this is telling me that I'm tw that this aircraft is 24 nautical miles from me. It's in cruise. It's at flight level 285, or 28,400 feet. Looks like it's um, doing a descent. It's traveling at um, 450 knots, and it's on a heading of 209. Uh, so it's uh, it's moving southwest, which means that it's moving probably towards me because I'm going. I'm on a heading of um, of 36. Oh, so I'm headed due north, um, virtually. So it's probably, probably am not going to be able to pick it up on my scopes. And let me make sure I got traffic turned on. Yep, traffic is on. Right, so take a look at the ground, see if we see anything. I do see some clouds out, just a few clouds out, and do see stars. And looks like my buddy sitting over there, he must be scared stiff. He has literally not moved. All right. <laughs> uh, there's a guy who uh, make YouTube videos, and uh, he has a uh, he flies the TBM, and the TBM has a passenger. Uh, no, no. Uh, yeah, he flies the TBM and Microsoft flights him, and there's a um, a woman sitting next to him and he has named her Jude <laughs> and he tickles me uh, when he talked to her okay so I am leaving on the labels for right now because they are actually not that distracting distracting uh, those are the traffic global labels and uh, for those of you who don't know, if the labels are red, then that's airline traffic. If they are blue, then that's general aviation traffic. As Steve-O, who fly the TBM 850 in real life says, if he's within an hour of his destination, then he can take a, um, a drink. So it's time for me to take a sip of my drink. All right. So let's get rid of this guy, maybe we can see out of see a little bit more out of the window. That's one of the reasons why I don't do a lot of night flying. Because there's generally not a lot to look at. Let's see now I got an airport and airfield over here. And that's going to be this airfield here, which is two November Romeo two. That's what that is. Okay, so let's take a look at our engine parameters, 
make sure that everything look okay. Um, we have 70% power. Our RPMs are, are at 2,000, 80. Um, our manifold pressure is at 31. So I am wondering, this is, um, in case you guys have wondered what this guy right here is um, up on the dash, this is our angle of attack indicator. And I can open it up or close it as needed. Looks like I'm approaching some populated area, some, some city area, because I'm starting to see some lights on the ground. And let's uh, go over here and take a look at the engine parameters. Okay, so 2580 is not in the green. Manifold pressure is 30.9 or uh, 31 rounded, 70% power or temperature is 165 degrees, which is pretty good. Uh, and ore pressure is in the green. Density altitude, cool. Um, the aircraft thinks it's at 9,300 feet and it's actually at 8,000 feet. So that's good to know. Outside air temperature is 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. Let's see what else we got here. And our next waypoint is coming up in 9.4 nautical miles or 3.2 minutes. Back when I was taking flying lessons, we actually had to um, actually plot this stuff on the um, manually. You have to time yourself to get to where you think you are. Uh, do a little palletage to look out of the window to make sure that you see what you think you should see to kind of keep track of where you believe you are. But flying at night, you, unless there's something on the ground that you can see that can give you an idea of where you are, then you completely rely on instruments. Um, because you can't really look out and see, oh, there's a river, there's a lake, uh, there's a tower, you know, uh, just don't work. So, So let's go back to our map. And let's zoom out a little. And we are approaching the Fedville. Let's see, we still 20. 74 nautical miles from Raleigh, Durham, and that's going to take us 26 minutes to get there. Our ground speed is 167 knots, which would probably give us close to 175 miles per hour, uh, maybe 180. So let's see exactly how far from Fevel we are. We can use the GTN 650. Um, and we are 18 nautical miles from Fevel. It should take us six minutes to get there. And we are leaving the 
the game caught more so we are we are just about out of the 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 military operations area so if we wanted to descend to a lower altitude we could request and take it but not until we get out of this operations area all right let's see let's see what what uh, let's see let's drag this guy over a little bit make it larger and let's see what we can turn on all right so that's declutter and let's zoom out on this guy okay so as you can see this shows the more also and we are actually out of it on the Avadon map let's look at the um, yep we're out of it on both maps so yeah don't have to worry about getting shot down or catching a stray bullet uh, these moors it's better to avoid them when it makes sense um, I could have went around it um, I don't think it would have added but about three to five minutes to the flight if I had went around it. But I chose to fly over it, so. One of the things that, that is, it's, um, that a lot of you guys probably don't know but if you fly over an, an active military operations area, then they have to, and they are doing live fire exercises, they literally have to stop uh, the live fire exercise until you exit the area before they can resume. So flying over those operations area can cost the government money and and it it um, breaks the immersion of the training exercises for the for the troops who are who are training so that's another good reason to avoid the the the, the moors all right so we are over the federal shelf which goes up to 4,200 feet we're at 8,000 feet so we don't have to worry about um, traffic uh, we don't have to worry about um, violating the airspace but in real life we want to be monitoring the radios to make sure that um, that we don't um, fly near someone who, well, just as an abundance of caution, you know, it's always good to have flight following if the VFR or be on, a, on an IFR flight plan in constant contact with ATC. second monitor I'm going to pull up the uh, the map for VATSIM see if this area is active with uh, see if there's a controller speaking of which the last time I did attempted a VATSIM flight I could not hear 
the controllers on my uh, speaker. It looks like uh, Tell you what, let me just pull it over and let let you guys see what I'm what I'm looking at. So looks like um, Atlanta Center has a controller. In, an, uh, in, a, in Annapolis has a controller, and Memphis Center has a controller. And I thought there was an approach controller. Nashville has an approach controller. I thought I saw an approach controller for Atlanta, but I don't see one. So, Washington Center is is being controlled. So yeah, VATSIM is active on the East Coast. So I did all that and I'm not flying on VATSIM. So, looks like I'm in in the Fevel area. You can see all that um, all that light on the ground. This guy's pretty close. It's two nautical miles below me, and I'm surprised I didn't get a traffic warning. see him right I thought I saw him actually I don't see him I see him here on this map and I see him I see him on the I see the label So he's at 1,400 feet, I'm at 8,000 feet, so that's why I didn't get a traffic warning. He's not a factor. And again, the blue labels is general aviation, the red labels is airline traffic. And the airline traffic is real world traffic. So, um, what Traffic Global does is it get the schedules and routes from real world aviation and put them in the sim. So the only thing that I don't have is weather now let's see um tolls that's terrain awareness warning system terrain is not an issue and trips i don't have weather i don't have a uh, active weather system in this aircraft the gtn 750 is capable of of displaying weather 
but for training purposes, Gorman has has not made the weather available, so I can't see it. So, so I never see weather on the Gorman unless um, on on the Gorman 750 unless. Gorman allow the trainers to display weather. However, I can see the weather uh, when I'm flying the the G1000. Um, I don't know what how they managed to get the weather to display, but I'm not going to complain about it. Right. Now, one thing that I keep doing is if I want to say view, um, hit this, if I want to touch this soft key, um, I tend to keep clicking on this thinking that this is the button when actually the button are on the side. So this is not technically a touch screen, uh, this Avadon. All right. So um, 15 minutes from Raleigh, Durham, which is where we'll, com we'll conclude our flight 40 nautical miles from it. My ground speed is still 166 nautical miles. Uh, I'm sorry, 166 knots, which means I lost one knot since the last time I checked. Um, let's do an engine check here. Um, RPMs 28580, manifold pressure is 31%, speed power is still 70%. Um, let's change our fuel. Let's probably get in the fuel imbalance. All right. All right. Our fuel right now is balanced. So we'll stay on that right tank a little bit longer. Looks like we'll probably want to land on our left tank. So stay on that right tank for another, so we got 15 minutes before we land, stay on that right tank for another seven to 10 minutes. And then we'll switch to our left tank and land on it. Okay. I do like having the steam gauges here in case the, um, the electronic displays go out. Um, I know some aircraft have two independent, two or three independent systems of electronic displays, but my issue with that is um, in the event that there's an EM burst, it could take out all three of the electronic systems and without the analog systems you'd be flying blind. So uh, I'm surprised the FAA um, is allowing aircraft makers to to go all, all electronic, all, all digital So this guy who's flying general aviation, um, they don't give us this, yeah, he's going to CNA, KCNA, 
Is that Chattanooga? No. Chattanooga is, um, what is KCNA? KCNA, let's see where he's going. Uh, airport. CNA flight aware. Um, and I know you guys can't see what I'm doing here because I'm doing it on the second monitor. Well, I'm not sure what KCNA is because it doesn't appear to be an airport. It's not coming up. Hmm, interesting. He's getting further and further from me. He's 20 nautical miles away. So I suppose that the that the CNA may may denote something different than, than its destination. Okay, so we got Delta departing from, from that, it's gotta be federal, right? No, that's, that's RDU. So we're 25 nautical miles from Raleigh, Durham, and I can see it already as if, uh, man, it's a beautiful night to fly, right? All right, so we're at 8,000. Let's start our descent here. Let's, um, let's see. get down to um, to, th to 3,000 and let's dial that down to 3 and start a vertical descent and let's descend at, f at 1,200 feet a minute. Uh, let's pull that power back. Oh, I don't think my air. Uh, I don't think. Didn't sound like my engine liked that very much. Okay, gotta get down. Um, speed. And now let's pull that power back. We got the power pour back fully. So we technically are gliding. And we are slowing down and descending.
All right, let's get our ATOS for our RDU. If I'd have been smart, I, I would have already had dialed that in. Um, let's see, 123.8 is the frequency that we need. Let's get our meter. I, I keep calling it ATOS, but in this case, ATOS is correct. Kilo. Zero hundred Zulu weather. With zero six zero and seven. Visibility more than ten. Sky conditions three thousand five hundred few. Fourteen thousand broken. Twenty five thousand overcast. Temperature two six. Two point two two. Altimeter three zero zero six. Arriving runway zero five left. Zero five right. Departing runway zero five left. Zero five right. On initial contact, you have kilo. Okay, we got kilo information. Kilo and wind zero six zero at seven knots. Um, and so if we fly straight in, if we fly right a right base for runway zero five right then that would make the most sense on our entry all right so at this point we're going to get off the nav and dial in and fly headings and let's fly zero Let's fly ahead in a 330. So head and bug, swing that over to 330. Now let's make it 340. And swing this and turn the head and on. And let's see if that'll get us on. Okay, let's make sure we got an altitude capture on so we don't descend below 3,000. Okay, altitude capture is on. 72% power. Just about in the yellow arc here, so stressing out the aircraft all right so landing lights can come on uh, glumps gas lights gas 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 left tank lights undercarriage mixture for rich and props all right So we can slow down. Uh, making some errors here, guys. All right, and then get rid of this guy here. Uh, come on, get rid of it. How do I get rid of that? There we go. All right. Watch our speed. We're getting a little slow here. All right. And it's my airplane, so let's kill our autopilot. Get that nose down first. All right. It's my airplane. All right. So we're going to do a um,
a VFR landing. Um, we need to turn the tower frequency, which is 127.45. 12745 uh, one, two, seven, four, five, enter. All right. And let's make this turn towards the runway. Yeah. Raleigh Tower, Sierra 724, Mike Whiskey is seven miles inbound from the south four stop. too high. So let's uh, get in some flaps here and try and get down. I think I'm going to be too high to make this landing. Let's try it. Uh, let's turn our flight director off. Power is all the way out, so I'm essentially gliding. Let that nose drop. All right, I'm picking up the glide slope, so let me put some power in. we can make this guys I'm a little bit low now all right I'm on the glide slope and I want about 400 feet per minute descending Alright, so if I can hold it about right here, we should be able to set it down nicely. Now, I think I want to come in at, um, I think I want to touch down at about 80 knots. So let's uh, power back, slow down, raise that nose. on my glide slope so let that nose drop a little bit and trim it look mom no hands all right I'm back on my glide slope all right raise that nose keep that power out go we are we're fairly stable all right lights are on gear is down And uh, speed with power, 85 knots. Feel like I got a little crosswind because um, I'm being pushed to the uh, right a little bit. All right, 
Let's go four flaps. center line power out transition and we buttered that landing nice So guys, welcome to Raleigh Durham International. Um, one of the flights that I don't normally do is um, are the night flights. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me. And let's say this one is gonna go on my Frank White channel but don't forget I've got um, I've got another channel which is virtual general aviation aviator that uh, that I've linked to in the in the description below and you guys are welcome to follow me on that channel also um, I usually put my unedited stuff or stuff with very little editing on that channel um, so anyway I'm clear the runway Raleigh Tower Sarah 724 Mike Whiskey is clear of the active taxi to parking taxi to parking via Alpha Juliet Juliet one seven two four Mike Whiskey. So let's get cleaned up before we taxi. Flaps up. So I go with F L T T flaps lights so that strobes can come off. Don't blind other pallets and um Flaps, lights, transponder, and trim. Uh, let's check the trim. Yeah, so, so let's um, set this guy back to takeoff. Tran and transponder is on ground. All right. And got our taxi instructions and we can go and park this guy so this is the SR-22 um, four-seater basically a one million dollar air aircraft um, beats flying what I'm used to flying in real life which is a probably a $60,000 Cessna 172. Uh, I think the Cessna, the, uh, the airplane that I've flown in real life is, uh, is a 1968 model of the Cessna 172, maybe a 172M. Let's see, I'm looking for Juliet. I'm looking for Charlie first. There's Charlie. All right, so I turn on Charlie and then I pick up Juliet. All right, so this is Juliet. And then Juliet one.
my, uh, my flight instructor used to always tell me that a flight is not over until you're walking away from the aircraft. So, just because you're on the ground, it don't mean that you finished flying the aircraft. There are more accidents happen on the ground than in the air. All right. So. Park here. All right. Shut down. So we're going to use Slim, which is um, switches, lean instruments, uh, not switches, lean ignition, and master. All right. So let's turn our switches off. Lights, nav lights. Pito heat, avionics, alternators, battery two, leave battery one on so that we can have some light. Let's set our caps back up. Ah, I just pulled a parachute. <laughs> that was, that made for a bad day. All right, so I pulled it again. Yeah. Let's see. I don't see it deployed outside the aircraft anyway. Um, I'm looking, I'm trying to put the pin back in the, there you go, that's what I wanted. I'm just trying to put the pin back in the parachute. All right, and then let's lean it out. All right, and turn our fuel off. And turn our battery off. And then turn our max off. And the aircraft is parked. All right, guys, like again, I enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you got any comments, leave them below. Um, until next time, you guys know what to do. Y'all come back now, dear.